All right, you guys, we're going to go ahead and get started now. As always, thanks so much for being here. We uh, really appreciate you taking time out of your Tuesday night to enjoy episode 14 of season two of Line Change with Mayhem head coach Ryan Michael. Uh, per your requests, our player guests tonight are Caleb Cameron and Dylan Denemy. They both had an outstanding weekend down in Pensacola. Let's hear it for these two gentlemen. Uh, guys, we'll get to you in just a second. First, I want to ask Coach a couple of questions. Um, first thing I wanted to ask you, Coach, is because it was such a huge weekend, the team took all four points that were available against a very difficult team, and that's not a building that you'd expect to be able to take all four points in, and yet you guys pulled it off. Um, what, uh, what were some of the things that went right for the mayhem this weekend from your perspective? Um, no, I think we just battled. It was you know, a tough week in the sense that you know, not having ice and you kind of don't really get to, to sharpen up on some things you want to or, you know, work on things you need to. Um, you know, so especially early that Friday game, uh, it was a bit sloppy for us. And, you know, just kind of being able to simplify our game and, you know, just work work as hard as we could, especially being short, having nine forwards. So mm-hmm. um, it, was, it was just a great effort and, um, you know, Continuing into work, especially you know having to tie that game up late. I was actually, um, I wasn't. I want to say not paying attention. I had said you know the next line up, and I was trying to write up a six on five face off play. And sure enough, as I'm doing that, Mello scores to, to tie the game. So um, you know sometimes there's just those weekends where you know things go your way and you kind of earn it. And um, you know for the most part, I thought we did that. You know Saturday's third period was was tough and. They were buzzing and, and kind of jamming it down our throat. But, again, just, you know, the ability to kind of reset when going into overtime and, and find a way to get that second point was huge. Yeah, it was, certainly. And, it, and it's not just this past weekend uh, that has gone right for the mayhem. Really, the month of February has been um, a very good month so far. The team's taken nine points out of a possible 12. Things seem to be taking a, a positive turn here. And uh, Dylan was asked this yesterday on the, the Monday morning Creek show um, by, uh, by Tony Doolin about uh, whether the team's chemistry was really starting to reach new heights. Um, he said he feels that way for sure and that, uh, you know, there's just uh, everybody on the, on the team now just wants to be here and is going, going to work every day, and um, he feels that the chemistry is reaching new heights. Do you think that's the case here? Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's, um, you know, throughout the course of the year you have those, those stretches of, of games where things go right and things go well and... and uh, on the opposite side, you know, things don't go well. So right now I think we're in that stretch, but um, I certainly feel like, you know, the chemistry has gotten better. And, you know, like he mentioned and you just did, you know, we're getting to a point now where in terms of the roster construction, we've got guys that, you know, our, our desire is to be here to work hard, you know, to win games, to make playoffs, to win a championship. And, you know, when everyone's kind of mentally pulling the, the same rope in the right direction, that's kind of the results you, you're going to get. So, Caleb, uh, first off, congratulations on being named the SPHL's Warrior Hockey Player of the Week. Thank you. Thank you. Second time this season that a Mayhem player has uh, earned that honor, and you what a weekend you had. Uh, two back-to-back overtime game-winning goals and a, uh, a hat trick on Saturday night. Were there any hats whatsoever thrown under the ice after your uh, third goal on overtime on Saturday? Yeah, I, uh, there was actually a, a making tracks hat that was on the ice that one of the boys threw at me in the locker room oh, after the game. Okay. I don't know if it was one of our fans that was there. Uh, couldn't tell you, but uh, there was one hat, so it was nice to be able to <laughs> well, that's see a little now. bit of support. Shane, you were down there. Was that you? Well, hang on to that hat for, uh, for dear life, because I don't know that they make too many of those anymore. But, uh, Dylan, the next question I have is for you. You also had a, a great weekend. Um, you and Cam seem to be a, a well-oiled machine, particularly in overtime. Um, and the team had, had not played well in Pensacola uh, recently. The team had lost seven straight. But you told me um, before going on the show on Monday morning on the creek that you actually have always liked playing down there at the hangar. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Um, I don't know. I, I just think they always have uh, a lot of fans, right? It's, it's always fun to play in front of a big crowd. Um, ice conditions are always uh, pretty great there. Um, I don't know. It's it's kind of cool. You go down to Florida, you get to play a couple of games. Like I don't see a, I don't see what's really wrong with uh, why everybody doesn't like going down there. <laughs> um, but as far as like 
me. Uh, it's my first time playing them this year, and um, we had success there my first year um, when I played here. So I don't know what's gone on between the stretch since then, but but yeah, that's pretty much. Uh, I know my first year we we did really good there. Yeah, yeah, you did, and that was the last time uh, before this past weekend that the Mayhem were able to come away uh, with a win down there for whatever reason. It's just been a bit of a curse, but it's it's a good thing that that curse has now been lifted, uh, in large part thanks to you two guys. And the last question I have for you two, um, you, you're both free to answer. Uh, you both linked up for the overtime game winners. Um, the team had not uh, particularly done well in overtime this season either, just 1-5 and five before the weekend started. Now we're 3-5 and five in overtime um, on both situations, Dylan, you fed Cam the game-winning goal uh, in the three-on-three. -three. Do you feel that there might be some chemistry forming between you guys that uh, might help the team going forward in the uh, in the sudden death? Well, yeah. I mean, we were just waiting for Mike's to finally put us together. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but so you know, I think I think you know we played together um, our first year, and I think that chemistry has always been there. Dill mm -hmm. Dill mentioned it on the radio show that. We actually played in uh, in on an All Star game. We were on a we were on a line together back when we were 17. So, just I think you know being comfortable with each other, um, you know, since we were kids, obviously kind of correlates into you know playing together now and being able to play together our first year and then obviously getting our chances together this past weekend and in the previous weekends every now and then. Um, you know that obviously shows a lot that you know we trust each other. We know where each other are on the ice and. Um, obviously, it paid dividends. Yeah, pretty much the same mm -hmm. same thing. He's, um, it's easy to play um, with, with a smart with a smart player, you could say. And it's just, uh, yeah, I I feel like that goes both ways. <laughs> yes, it does. Yes, it does. Um, but no, it's uh, yeah. It was nice uh, getting a chance to to get some a lot of shifts actually together this weekend, and it. Seemed that the chemistry was still there from year one, so it was nice to get the the two wins. Are we going to see that at uh, even strength at all going forward? You think, coach, or is that just a three on three situation? Now I feel like I have to. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, you guys. I actually, have one last question for all three of you. In the spirit of pucks and paws night, because we are having that this Saturday, um, all three of you own a dog uh, which you adopted in Macon. We want to know the story and we want to know it now. All three. <laughs> okay. Um, well, Kenzie and I got our dog, Lulu, from um, All About Animals. Um, she, and I feel like I'm going to butcher this story, but I'll try. Uh, her and her brothers and sisters were found wandering down in Hawkinsville. Is that right? Is that a place? Okay. Um, so, yeah, she was there for a bit, and um, uh, Kenzie's wife, she wasn't in town. I had the chance to go down there and, and meet her, and, um, you know, pretty soon after you know, five minutes in, I kind of knew she was, you know, the one. She's very shy and timid at first, especially with men, uh, even with me. So, um, but, you know, it's just, it's been a great experience for both of us, and, you know, we love her to death. So. Yeah, so, I mean, obviously most of you guys have heard tons of stories about Stan, but uh, last year, uh, right after Hurricane Michael, um, you know, we had obviously known Heather through Dill. Um, we had met her, you know, our first year here, and, after Hurricane Michael, there were a bunch of dogs that had been stranded. So she had mes messaged us saying, hey, any chance you can come take a dog for a night or two or for a week, whatever. Obviously, that was her saying, can you come adopt a dog? Um, because, you know, I saw Stan first thing at the rescue. Uh, he was just obviously a puppy that needed needed some help. Um, two hunters found him over near Perry and Warner Robins in between there. Uh, out at a hunt cabin, so he was he was pretty far back. Um, in the middle of nowhere, and you know, it took me two days to to say to hell with it. I'm adopting this dog, and you know, it's been the best thing that obviously I ever could have done. Um, you know, like like I said in the post, you know, a rescue dog is probably more appreciative than anything else in the world. Um, they really truly um, know that you care for them, you know, wholeheartedly. So, um, I actually adopted. I had adopted a, a dog first before I adopted Tito. Um, I adopted Cooper. Uh, actually, he's Seamer's dog now. Um, I couldn't bring him across the border because pit bulls are banned in Ontario. So Seamer ended up taking him in. And then um, I was still looking for a dog, and Heather messaged me. And this, she's like, yeah, I got this little, like, 
Rat. Rat. Yeah, pretty much rat. And I was like, perfect. And I sent a picture to my mom. My mom was like, oh, my God, yeah, love him. So I named him Tito after my dad's favorite vodka. Um, <laughs> he appreciated that. Um, but, yeah, he's uh, my mom and my sister and my dad. They uh, Tito probably loves them more than he loves me now, actually. He's, he's, with the, he's living with them right now. And uh, the family wouldn't change it for anything. Um, so it was a great experience getting to adopt him. That's awesome. So are all three of them going to be at Pucks and Paws night on Saturday? No. 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 None of Stan does not do well with large crowds. <laughs> Tito's a Canadian dog now, so. Yeah. yeah. Well, Lulu came last year, didn't yeah. she? Yeah. Well, I, obviously I wasn't dealing with that, but, um, yeah, she's not going. She's a little <laughs> afraid of the, the loud noises in the big crowd. So. Yeah. Just shaking the whole time yeah. last year, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, that's all the questions that I have. The floor is now yours. Uh, as always, the only thing we ask is that you please ask your questions into this crowd mic here so that we can get it all saved for our uh, archive version later on. Hey, Coach. Um, I know I know a lot of fans were saying uh, that it was better to have the struggles that the team was having earlier in the season as opposed to now when it matters the most. Uh, could you just describe to us how you've seen this team grow from the beginning of the year, obviously under Leo, to now with what looks like a better defensive game and an ability to play a full 60 minutes? Um, yeah, I mean, it's obviously not college where the roster kind of stays the same the whole time. It's you know pretty much fluctuating a good bit. Um, so... I've just tried to, you know, shake things up with some trades and bringing some guys in. And, um, you know, like you said, it's all about, I mean, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And, you know, we're st- we still got a, a bit of work to do. Um, you know, I'm, I'm somebody that's never really satisfied. You could ask these two guys next to me that that's kind of the case. And, um, you know, I want things kind of done perfect. And, and I get that's not ever going to happen or, or the way I want it. And, um, you know, obviously nine – I don't know what you said, nine points out of possible 12 in February. That's, you know, that's great. It's something we haven't done yet. Um, I'm certainly happy with that. But, you know, moving forward, it's – I'm not done bringing guys in. I'm already looking to bring in some college guys or, um, you know, I got to keep kind of the, the foot to the floor and we got to find a way to make playoffs. So, you know, that's – I'm happy with where we are, especially after last weekend. Um, but in the same sense, I'm not. I, I want to still, you know – get to seventh and, and, and be ready to go and play in our best hockey by, by playoffs. It actually works as a good transition for my question uh, about uh, bringing guys in and stuff. And one of the ones that I've kind of just came to mind when I was looking, because we only had 5D suit up for uh, Friday's game. Uh, has there been any contact with Rene Hunter at all about seeing if he would be because uh, I know we still have uh, team rights to him, just right. if there's been any contact about bringing him back? No, I mean... Um, you know, for me, it's it's a thing where, you know, granted I wasn't head coach when all that kind of went down, but, um, you know, if somebody kind of, you know, leaves for personal, whatever reason it is, it's, you know, for me it's not, I feel like my prerogative to reach out, you know, like kind of what I was alluding to before um, with all these moves is, you know, I want guys that want to be here, that want to get better, that want to help us win, are here for the right reasons and not the wrong ones, so, um, you know, for him, you know, I don't know what was kind of going through his mind 100% on, you know, his decision. But, you know, if, if he wanted to come back, that's something, you know, I'd expect kind of for him to reach out to me and, um, you know, not the other way around. Uh, to follow up with that, uh, are there any updates uh, on uh, Zimlecker? Is It didn't look like he played this weekend. Yeah, um, his shoulder's kind of bugging him a bit. So, um, you know, I just had him dressed because we were short anyway, just, you know, in case of a, a too many men or something where I needed somebody to serve a penalty, he would just kind of um, facilitate that role. So he's just got, you know, an AC joint issue in his shoulder where um, – so we didn't skate today. We're kind of, you know, taking it slow day by day, and um, it's kind of going to go from there. When it comes down to getting into the playoffs and looking at several teams that we're tied with, but we've played more games than they have, how will that break up? Like, what do you mean? Like, how that'll play out? Yeah. Yeah, well, it's just we, 
they have more opportunity to kind of jump us in, in the standings, essentially, because they have those extra games in hand. So um, for us, that just puts more of a premium on every game because we they have more in hand. You know, we have we we have to have this win now, win every game mentality. Just because, again, technically, even if we won every game and they won every game, we're still out. So um, you know, that's just it is what it is. That's just the nature of the schedule and. Yeah being kind of front-loaded with home games at the beginning of the year. And what about Danny Cesars? When will he return? Uh, can't really comment on that 100%. We're still kind of, you know, it's... Is, is he doing better? Yeah, I mean, he skated today, so we're, we're, it's a day-by-day thing. It's kind of, again, I've been telling everybody some of this is, you know, not even in my control. Yeah. Um, so... This one's uh, for Cam. Um, how did it feel f- uh, both for the team and you to finally get not just one OT win, but back-to-back and also scoring the game-winning goal in both of them? Yeah, it definitely felt good. Um, obviously, we've struggled with the overtime games, um, you know, staying strict man-to-man in the in the D zone. Um, you know, I think it's when it comes to overtime now, with even in the NHL, any league doing the three-on-three format, it's all about puck possession and, you know, Mike's uh, talked to us about, you know, the one and done's going, you know, trying to get it in the zone and then either losing the puck and, you know, it's the puck's the most valuable thing out there, right? So, you know, especially, you know, like I said earlier, being able to play with Dill, you know, we really possessed that puck and the, the fact that we were able to find, you know, get two goals, two overtime goals to win both games was you know, pretty special and I think definitely a momentum changing, you know, a big shift in, in the season and, you know, like, like even like Mike said earlier, you know when things are going your way, things are going your way, and it, it feels good. And you know, I definitely think you know the dressing room was pretty uh, ecstatic after that weekend, and you could see it in the boys that uh, you know things are changing, and you know things are thing good things are coming our way. So it was it was big for us. It's good. That leads right into my question. So. Uh, in, in sports in general, there's a big difference in what I've kind of thought of as uh, being called set pieces, where in football you get to you know, run a, a specific play every time, whereas in more free-flowing sports you don't really have that. But Friday night there was a set piece in overtime that you made a really interesting choice and I wanted to ask you about. Pensacola took the really bad delay of game penalty. You called timeout immediately and then sent out a uh, power play unit of four forwards. The two of them... P-Rog and Walter, uh, which is an interesting decision to not put a defenseman on the ice. And it looked like they had a very set play that they tried to execute because right before Cameron scored, it looked like they tried to do the exact same setup. What was that timeout like on the bench? Uh, what did you like discuss with them strategically? Anything like that? Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I thought it was, it was kind of like an all or nothing, you know, situation. Um, as, as far as drawing something up, it really was nothing. It's more, you know, like you said, in football, it's, you know, it's, it's straight lines a bit. You know what I mean? There's not, I want to say there's no creativity, but it's um, it's a little different, especially in a four-on-three situation. It's, you know, a loose structure where it's just, hey, let's just be in a box, rotate to a diamond, do slashes, move. We had to move. That was the only thing I was saying is we had to keep, you know, moving pucks around the outside and moving to try to find those those seam passes and whatnot. So, um, you know, that, at that point, it was kind of up to them. Um, there was no, you know, magic secret set piece. It was more just, hey, let's be in a relative box structure. When we moved Waltz kind of net front and back to the goal line, and then I just let, you know, you know, Rogues and, and these two guys kind of move around and try to find each other through the seam, and it, and it worked out. And I'm not going to lie, I was thinking all about us having the puck, and I was telling them after the overtime, as soon as they, they had the puck, I was like, oh, my God, I don't have a single defenseman on the ice right now. So, um, <laughs> yeah, you, you know, do. <laughs> a former defenseman. Um, no, it was, it was, you know, I approached it as, you know, this is kind of an all-or-nothing moment. So I'm glad it, it worked out. All right, Caleb. Yep. You've played forward and you've played defense. Which position do you like better? Assistant coach. Assistant coach. No, uh, 
I obviously I, I like to play forward. Um, <coughs> I, I find I I would say I'm a, a full 200 foot player. So even though I'm a forward, I'm definitely um, like to play in the D zone, helping the guys get out of the zone, and then getting up and getting up the ice to create offense. So. It's kind of give or take. Obviously, I love to play forward, but I love my defensive play as well. Uh, so my question is for Dylan. Uh, when you were on the creek earlier, uh, they were asking you the movie question. And you said something that I thought was really interesting, uh, that the movie that you suggested uh, was a documentary called Ice Guardians, which is about enforcers in the NHL in that role. And I was surprised that that, that that seemed to be one that you really stuck with, just because that's not your role and never really has been. So what about that uh, movie really kind of stuck with you? Um, I think it's because it's real. Like it's, a, like, it's a documentary, like I said, and you interview, interviews real players and guys that... Uh, that don't have a role with fighting and stuff like that. And it takes their opinion on the matter too. Um, but it's just, I think it's really cool when you got guys that have done it at the, the highest level possible and not at the highest level. And it's just, uh, it shows you how important it is in the game and just uh, kind of just shows, sheds light on how the players actually feel about it. And cause you, you do have those people nowadays that have never played a sport or, never played the game and they think it doesn't belong and fighting doesn't belong in the game and well i'm gonna agree i'm gonna say that they're dead wrong on that one too i disagree with that totally um and just puts in a gives opinions and like just kind of tells about their their stories and whatnot in that documentary which is it's pretty awesome gives me chills like i said watching it Yeah, this one's also for Dylan. Um, so you've been on the same line with uh, Pirog and Josh Cousineau for some time now. But um, how do you feel like – or what's it been like going to work with those guys? And um, how do you feel like that line in particular has been able to contribute to the games recently? Um, I, 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 I don't think I've played with anybody except for Rogues the whole year. So it's been, it's been good. We've, been, um, we've de- developed some chemistry. Um, yeah, we've had kind of a revolving door on the on the left wing, but uh, no, Kuzi's a stand-up guy. He, he works really hard. Um, he is a pest. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad he's on. Uh, I'm glad he's on our team because I don't know if I could take that smile of him slashing me or something <laughs> playing against them. Um, but no, it's it's good. Um, th- three guys that have uh, had experience playing at a professional level, which is nice too. So. So yeah, it's been uh, it's been good. And they really miss him down there in Pensy, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> they must. <laughs> they must. So kind of a surprising thing to find uh, scouring through social media a little bit was that Timofeev uh, is back in Elmira. Um, any comments as to what happened there or why he's no longer on the team? Yeah, I put him on team suspension today, so um, that'll be on transactions. Um, yeah, he just you know, wanted to wanted to go back. So, um, and like I've said, I think eight times already today. It's you know, and and the line chains pass. I want guys that you know want to be here, and, and if you don't, then I don't want you here. So, um, you know nothing but the best for him you know I know he enjoyed his time down there last year and you know I know he'll be kind of a big piece for them coming back so um, you know if that's what he wants to do then you know it's fine with me missed you Nathaniel you too (laughs) Uh, coach uh, can you speak to the signing of uh, Bobby Sokol is it today what do you like about him? What do you think he can bring? Well, I actually played uh, with Bobby at school. Um, we both played at Hobart together. And, you know, in terms of points and, and style of play, I always liked him. He's kind of – he's a smaller guy, but he's a bit of a water bug and uh, not afraid to kind of get in corners and, and be annoying to play against. So, 
Um, certainly doesn't hurt to have a, a guy like that. Um, he took some time off and then decided he wanted to give it another go. Uh, was in Port Huron for, I think, seven or eight games and seven, had yeah. like 13 points or something like that. So, I mean, um, you know, not necessarily like points are the ultimate translator to our level, but, um, you know, a guy that's, you know, hasn't played in a good bit that's doing that in a short period of time certainly kind of, you know, and, and we were short up front anyway uh, with Team Afeyev, so, um, you know, made sense for me to at least give him the opportunity and, and see kind of what shakes out. With all of these guys kind of coming out of retirement that are, like, just coming in beast mode on our team, is there any chance of getting, like, John Seymour or <laughs> Seth Rosenberg back? <laughs> um, no, they're married now. Yeah. <laughs> so, no. no. no R.I.P. I, I don't think so. It's uh, – that's – I mean, there's – you get guys that that retire that are – you know, they miss it enough to come back. And, you know, I, I think every player, to be asked, that's retired always has kind of those feelings, I think. You know, for guys like Seth and, and Seymour, it's, you know, they're in a different kind of stage of their lives now. So, um, you know, at some point you kind of have to, you know, move on. So, um, you know, certainly happy for them and, and yeah. Uh, this one's for Cameron. After Friday's OT winner, uh, you did the blind man celebration. <laughs> Which, great Sally, by the way. Thank uh, you. But I don't feel like I kind of understood why you went with that one. Could you yeah. explain? Uh, of course I can, because Mike's actually gave me crap because he thought I was doing it for the refs. But uh, <laughs> So I don't know if you guys can see, but my right eye is pretty uh, nice and black and yellow. So actually right first shift of overtime, right before Mike's call. I think I was going to say this earlier. I think Mike's called the timeout because he wanted to give me some time to find my eyeball. Um, <laughs> Sean Lynch got hit over at our bench, and his stick came over and caught me right in the eye and got me pretty good, like sent me right down into the bench, and I, I thought I was bleeding everywhere. So anyways, hence the blind man, Sally. I had one eye, so I thought I'd do it just for some fun. Yeah, he had me chasing him all the way down, around the ice to celebrate. <laughs> All right, I have one last one here. Uh, so, uh, Cam, you've been with the team for a while now. Dylan, you're familiar with most of the guys you play with. So I thought I'd ask you guys some superlatives uh, about some of your teammates. Okay. So I'm going to give you uh, a couple here and just name who you think fits it best. So uh, best fashion sense. Oh, Cam. <laughs> Seriously, who else? Yeah, I'll give that one to him. Yeah. All right, thank you. Gletch is not here anymore. All right. right. Uh, Best roommate. On it, Best on, roommate. I, I'm I'm pretty biased. I I mean we have a pretty good apartment. Dill is always sitting on my couch, but Herbs is a great roommate. I feel like Larry's a good roommate too. I got him back there. <laughs> yeah. No way. All right. uh, most underrated player. Hmm. You can pick one, then I'll pick one. That actually doesn't get a lot of credit for it. I'm going to go with Larry, too, on that one. <laughs> well, now i got to pick a different player. Um, <laughs> honestly, I, I would probably pick Lyncher. Um, tiny guy, you know, obviously at the start of the year, even at the end of last year, when he came in, he was having a tough time scoring. And I think now that he's got the confidence, um, you know, takes his shots when it's there you know he works hard always he's not afraid to go to the corners and I think it's a for a small guy that you know doesn't maybe have the weight on him either I think uh he's pretty fearless and and now that he's got his confidence I think uh I think he's been a hell of a player for us all right last one uh best teammate <laughs> huh. we got it we got a bunch of bad teammates, yeah. man. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Definitely not Rogue. <laughs> uh, best teammate. 
I don't know. That's too tough to pick. I'm not going to pick one guy. I'll pick. Got a, Come on. We got a lot of good guys. We got a lot of really good guys. Larry's Larry's probably the best teammate. The Chevy Colorado is always yeah. ready for anyone that needs a ride. Yeah. <laughs> Except when he can't find his keys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah. his keys exactly. were in my truck. Yeah. How did that happen? Whoever moved well, my yeah. truck left Alex, the keys. Oh, okay. We won't say any names. Okay. Oh, you did? Yeah. <laughs> All right, you guys, any other questions? All right. Well, uh, as always, we really appreciate you guys participating. You uh, make the show a lot more interesting for us and a lot more entertaining. And uh, I think you guys chose uh, some very good player guests to have on this week, uh, this week as well. They've both done a great job. So thank you guys for coming out, Caleb and Dylan. Uh, Coach, you. I've got one last question for you uh, before we get to the trivia question. Um, looking ahead to this weekend, another three-game weekend, um, and Thursday's game will be tough. It's a 10 a.m. puck drop in Fayetteville. Um, how do you even go about preparing for a 10 a.m. puck drop? Um, I mean, it's just kind of the logistics change a bit. Yep. Um, you know, not having practice Monday, so trying to fit everything in today and tomorrow that you know, kind of want to just sharpen up on um, makes it a little challenging not having that extra day of practice. Um, but, yeah, just I think it's more the logistics of, you know, when you're leaving and um, what time the bus has to get to the rink to sit so we have enough time for the driver to sleep to us, for us to leave right after. And I think we're getting guys like breakfast sandwiches delivered to the bus or something like that for the morning. So just kind of more the logistical side is it's more of a headache. Um, you know, it's, I enjoy kind of the, the 10 a.m. games, uh, you know, for the school games. I think it's a good idea. It's just, you know, when you're the away team, it kind of creates more of a headache trying to, you know, figure everything out. And coordinate everything. Yeah. Well, when are you guys leaving? When's the bus leaving? Uh, we're going to leave at 10 p.m. tomorrow night, um, and that'll give us enough time for the driver. The driver has to sit once we get there right. for eight hours. The bus has to sit there for eight hours before he can drive again. So that that'll give us enough time that right after the game we can hop on and leave, and we don't have to hang out at the ring. Gotcha. Well, that will be a challenge for sure, but uh, we believe in you guys. You've been. Uh, Really uh, off to a great start so far in the month of February, and we're looking forward to this weekend. Uh, again, folks, Friday, uh, making mistakes night at 7.30. Zach has some things planned for it. It should be a lot of fun. Um, and then Saturday is going to be our pucks and paws. Of course, if you've got a wiener dog and you haven't registered him or her for a wiener dog race, be sure to do that as soon as you can. Um, those are always exciting, of course. Hazel, the reigning wiener dog champion, just going to throw that out there. With, with an asterisk. Uh, uh, no asterisk. <laughs> Okay, so I just gave you guys a hint to our trivia question, and the trivia question is this. We'll see how close you've been paying attention. For this one, you're going to have to raise your hand. All four of us are dog owners. Name all four of them. Sal. I just said it. Okay. Yeah, I just said it. <laughs> yeah, Debbie. <laughs> okay, well, you just gave it to Sal. <laughs> All right, Sal, congratulations. You got it. <laughs> All right, you guys, thanks so much for coming out. Really appreciate it. Uh, there won't be a line change show next Tuesday because we've got a game. It's going to be the, the makeup game from uh, the Pensacola game that was postponed. That's going to be next Tuesday. Um, so obviously there won't be a line change, but we hope to have you at that game as well as uh, this weekend's tilts Friday and Saturday at 7.30 and 7 p.m. respectively. So, again, thanks so much, you guys, and we'll see you on Friday night. Thank you, guys.